Good afternoon, George Cavaligos for HFT Bonds and Notes. Not too bad today. Hopefully, I got that uh, email and the S&P chart out to you guys early enough that you could see the uh, big support level that we were messing around with early this morning in the S&Ps and kind of the decent resistance areas that we were looking at in the Treasuries. Uh, you know, my early lean in the email was for the market to trade higher, and we were trading higher. Again, you know, you wake up overnight and you see the market kind of grinding a little bit higher. Yesterday's high was, what, I think 18 and a half in the 10 year. We had traded up to 19 half, and then we saw some selling. And, you know, as the, the markets were opening up here in the States, we saw some more buying coming in. The equities were messing around with that uh, support level that I sort of highlighted in the email this morning around uh, 41, 41 and a half area and thought that was kind of crucial. If that wasn't in a hold, the next big support level was 39.75, the C equals A target on the S&P and I wanted to, you know, sell the treasuries and buy the S&P off of that C equals A target and see what happened with the treasuries. Well, before we had the equity open, we started seeing some selling in the treasury markets, and I highlighted, you know, the selling that I was seeing in the chat room. Posted, you know, time to put some small shorts on here. You know, we're bumping up against, uh, you know, some significant resistance. The 21, 130.21 to 130.25 area is, you know, every tick is, you know, some different Fibonacci retracement, some Fibonacci extension, some previous fourth wave highs. You know, the, the whole stack right there is going to be tough to get through. And the bonds with the same thing, right up around the, the early highs, around 141, what was it, 21, 141, 21, 22. Same area as previous highs. And it looked like a, a previous fourth wave of one less degree, which is important, obviously. So we had to take a shot on the short side there. I got short at 18 and a half in the 10 year this morning. And, you know, put, put a stop up above 25, was thinking I'd add to it, you know, as we got in towards the equity opening and the buyback this morning. And retail sales came out and surprised the pants off everybody with a very strong number. And the market broke. I never got a chance to really add to it. I covered a little bit on the, uh, on the retail sales number. And then basically said, you know what, let's put a stop here. Let's see if this will run. Everybody has been afraid of, you know, the, the tightness of the repo market for 10-year notes. And everybody's pointing to the fact that that usually signifies a big short base in the market. I don't see a big short base in the market. The open interest in the future certainly doesn't show it. I think the dealers might be a little bit short of supply. I don't think they're short the market, but, you know, the other side of this is it's an auction. Dealers games all the time, you know, we talk about this and how they know the order book by, you know, a big percentage of what's out there. There's also some talk that a couple big um, holders of treasuries are refusing to lend those treasuries out, sort of causing this artificial sh scarcity at the moment and they're jacking the market up. I wouldn't be surprised if they're, you know, holding back on lending their, their notes out in the repo just so they can dump, you know, some longs out or, you know, put some shorts on as the market rallies, it, you know, because of this art, sort of artificial short squeeze that's going on. And obviously the Fed's buying everything in sight every day and that makes it sort of an underlying scarcity situation too. So we always have that underlying bid from the darn Fed. I want to see the markets prove to me that we can break out of some resistance levels here with volume and with some vigor. We're not seeing that. Um, I think we'll see continuous like snappy short squeezes like we saw yesterday because of what the Fed's doing and what some unnamed, unknown big players might be doing. It's easy to do when the supplies are as limited as they are. Um, tomorrow's the 30-year auction. We also have jobless claims, PPI, um, some important numbers out of Europe. I think the unemployment number out of the Eurozone. We also have another EU economic summit starting tomorrow. So there's going to be a lot of headline risk vis-a-vis -vis the, you know, European nonsense again. Everybody wants to get their name out there in lights and talk about how great or how poorly things are doing in Europe. So, trade them. Um, I 
don't have a real strong lean right now. I think we could trade up a little bit more overnight, but I, I'm not betting that way. I'm watching a poor close in the yen after a one-day bounce, a little bit of follow-through today, and then it closed lower today with a hammer look to it that is ominous to me. And equities that are closing either at their highs, close to their highs, or if you look at the Russell and the Dow, at all-time highs. So I'm going to stick with the equities higher, treasuries lower in the early part of the morning. Tomorrow is my early lean. Confidence is not huge here. So I'm going to look for the market to tell me when I see those sellers coming in again like it did this morning. And I'm going to jump on it then. Worked this morning. We had a great day. You know, could have been better. I could have maximized it a little bit better. But uh, I was kind of swinging for the fences on that little trailing uh, short that I still had. So... Still a decent day. Um, can't ask for better than that in the treasuries these days, especially during the day and not at night. So <laughs> I'll take a look at it tonight. We'll see what's going on, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great evening.